Good morning or good day, everybody. My name is Diane Lee. Um, and what this video will be sharing with you today is a live recording of part of a telehealth session that I did for a patient of mine. Oh. For our clients and patients out there, for you to see what telehealth is really all about and to be able to determine whether this is something that's appropriate for you or not. Okay, and so um, just to confirm right now, you're feeling like your pain has now moved more to a lower left-sided pain. Is that correct? Yes. It also started there. It's, that's right. It's, you started yes. and then it moved up, didn't yeah. it? Okay. So it's back more to where it originally started. Yes. Okay. Take your left hand and place it now over your sacrum with your fingers pointing down towards your tailbone. Perfect. And can you, can you make your hand be straight up and down a little bit more? There you go. Your shoulder okay there? Yeah. Good. Now take your right hand and on the outside of that big pelvic bone. Your right hand up a little higher. Yeah. And a little more to the side. That's perfect. Just like that. You okay there? Yeah. All right. Now just start by shifting your weight off the leg. So go to the left. And now come back to the right, pick up the left foot. This is hard. And back down again. And just repeat that a couple times for me. Now, and back down. Okay. Now, with your hands almost like where they are now, but with your fingers pointing forward, so the palms of your hands are on your pelvis, I want you to imagine like you've got a nice tight belt on your pelvis. You're going to just hug your pelvis, pelvic bones together, squeeze them together like that. Good. Now, try to stand on your right leg now and don't let your pelvis go. So just imagine you had more support like that. Does that make it easier to stand on the leg? Yeah. Okay, bring it up, bring your leg down again. And we're gonna do it one more time. And this time when you have your left leg up in the air, I'm gonna get you to let your hands go so you can feel the difference between having this support, okay? Shift your weight to the right. And now let your hands go. Any difference? Little, little wobblier. Yeah, okay. And then back down again. All right. Now, this time, I'm going to give you a, a little bit of verbal cueing around your pelvic floor to go along with the hypothesis that Kelly has that your pelvic floor may be working a bit too hard and your abdominal wall not working hard enough to see what this feels like for you, okay? So that was just a manual correction right now, but now we're going to see if we can do a correction that is more about you figuring out what you need to do with your muscles. All right. So what I want you to do right now is just think about your pelvic floor like a hammock, one of those nice hammocks at the cottage. I want you to really just see if you can let the hammock hang. So let your pelvic floor really relax. Think about the bones that you sit on going wider and that the whole of the bottom of your pelvis is just opening up the diamond of your pelvis getting wider from side to side and front to front. Now place your hands over the front of your pelvis, just where you were before. And very gently, while you're still keeping your pelvic floor off or relax off, but just relaxed, hug your hip, hug your pelvis together in the front a little bit, squeeze the bones together, because this is what the abdominals would do. Now try standing on your right leg. Lift the left one. Let your pelvis go. Good. Well, let your pelvis go. And stay there if you can. So let's do it again. Relax your pelvic floor. Manually compress your pelvis together in the front. Stand on your right leg. Watch your thorax translate beautifully, Kelly. Now let your pelvis go, Diane. 
and now she has more difficulty so there. Wiggle yourself so you're sitting in that nice, good position. Sit bones on the chair. I even like to pull my bottom cheeks out to really feel like I've got good support there. So on so, the edge, you need more? Yeah, if you need to, that's fine. And then, so what you're going to do is if you look at the inside of the pelvis, what you can see is the pelvis floor muscles through here, specifically these ones. Right, so you've got ischio coccygeus, you've got coccygeus through there. What we're trying to do is get that ball and sit on it so that we can access those muscles and release them. Okay. So if you see, there's your sitting bone. If you put the ball between your perineum and the sitting bone, you should be able to get right on that muscle. So if you try and sit on it, so the ball is right between your perineum and sit bone, can you find that spot? It's not pleasant no I but it shouldn't find the right spot it shouldn't feel like bone it should feel a bit spongier yeah I think I do yeah okay so let's say you're in the right spot what I want you to really focus on right now is trying to sink that hammock let your pelvis floor relax into that ball but I also want you to be mindful of your breath so you're really trying to do nice deep belly breath Try and expand your ribs and your tummy with a breath in and then just let it sink away passively on your breath out. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Just take a moment. So by doing that, we're trying to allow your pelvic floor to sink down and relax, but the ball to also help release those muscles a little bit as well and for a bit of feedback for you. So you would spend maybe a minute or two on that side and then you would change to the other side with the ball. Just spend a couple more seconds there. Does that feel okay? It feels okay on the ball. It's just my lower back is hurting. Okay. What I want you to do is, is tilt forward a little more because I feel like you might still be a little tucked under. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> yeah. I think your body naturally likes to be tucked under. So that's going to be an important strategy for you. Anytime you sit at home, it doesn't matter when it is. I want you to be really mindful of sitting that way and not tucking under. Yeah. So what Kelly is getting at, can you see these two skeleton pictures here? Yeah. When we sit on the very back part of our pelvis or when your knees are too high, can you see how your pelvis then rolls backwards? Can you yeah. see how, and you would be sitting right on your tailbone and your back muscles have to work really hard to stop you from falling backwards. So I think your back pain may be in part because of this posture position. So where Kelly was trying to get you was sitting with your pelvis more like this. So she talked about getting your butt cheeks backwards. So we yeah. call it the booty scoot. So you can right. grab your sitting bones, pull the sitting bone backwards so that you're weight bearing on your perineum, weight bearing on your legs, so that now your spine is supported in a normal curve. I think, I think you're right, Kelly. I tend to lean back a lot I notice it at work and yeah. I yeah. Like, think about stop doing that you're gonna have to be really mindful and just just put sticky notes everywhere you know around the desk whatever it is but it's also about the breath so because you can easily hold tension through your abdominal wall and your thorax as well it's about letting that go once you're in that good position that's important so um yeah, I really find pulling the cheeks out and the sit bones helps a lot. So you spend a couple of minutes with the ball, say a minute or two on each side. Let's say we've done that. Now take the ball away, but still sit in that position. And ideally you want your perineum on the chair because what you're going to spend a few minutes doing now is doing a small Kegel, but the focus isn't about doing a Kegel, but it's about letting go so you can feel that relaxation. So just here's how we're going to do it. So if you watch me, I'm taking a big breath in. And then as I breathe out, that's when I think of my Kegel. So, um, you know, one of the cues we like to use is, is thinking about tightening the anus, stopping a fart, stopping the pee, and then a small lift. Hold for about three seconds. And then you breathe in. And that's when you try and let everything go. And you should feel almost like your perineum sinks back into the chair when yeah. you let go. I felt so, it. And that's the homework piece for you is those, that whole sequence together. Okay. And that can be, you know, multiple times a day, three times a day. Okay. Tell me now what you felt. Do one more and tell me 
what you feel in your low tummy when you do that. I don't want you to do anything with your low tummy. Okay. I only want you to do what Kelly asked you to do, but bring your awareness now to the, just above the pubic bone. What happens to your low belly when you do your Kegel? Ooh. <laughs> it kind of tightens in. Lovely, nice. <laughs> So I don't think we add any more cueing for the abdominal wall, because if you can feel that your low belly is it's working, it's working, working. feel like it's a little bit or drawing in or lifting up, drawing in. Perfect. 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 Okay. Then I think we can pretty much say that we've got the two of them are talking to one another and uh, we don't need to add, add any more to that. Okay. Yeah. Now, are your feet on the floor? Yes. Okay. Think of nothing and come up to standing. Don't pre-contract anything, think of nothing good. And now sit down. Any pain sensations? Any pain sensations when you do that? Okay, now do it again. This time I want you to think about effort. How hard is it to get from sitting to standing? Go again. And then back down. So this time we're gonna do it now with, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with on the ball under your bum. So this time we're going to do it, do the same thing, but with a different, what we call strategy. So you're going to inhale, exhale, do that lovely gentle Kegel. Now come up to standing, keep the Kegel and come up to standing. Easier. Very good. Very good. And then back down again. All right. And so I'm not using my hands, which I no. normally Oh, I'm only using something to put my hand on. Excellent. So your homework practice. So you would do, you're going to still do your cat cow for your back extensors and, and thread the needle periodically because your back has been working so hard. And so is your bottom, your pelvic floor and your back are working really hard. And we need more coming from the deep front. All right. So periodically during the day, the cat cow and the thread the needle are a good idea. And then the next piece is the, the sitting piece and getting your pelvic floor moving better. Yeah, the excursion of your pelvic floor moving better. And then in conjunction with the deepest anterior uh, muscles, transversus abdominis, the deepest, lowest fibers of TA working with your pelvic floor. And your movement practice can near, and you can do, you'll do it in sitting with the purple ball. Your movement practice, once you've done, how many repetitions of that do you want her to do, Kelly? Of the pelvic floor excursion? Yeah. yeah. Uh, probably 10. Okay. So if you do 10 of those breathing Kegel exercises, after you've done 10 of those, I just want three sit to stands, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, so that you can feel the difference and like no hands, hands off mom. And then we start, we start now working your glutes and your hamstrings and the, the hip muscles. So it starts to get more towards strengthening, but we're building a better pattern. Okay. Right. Right. Every time you get off the toilet, you get out of a chair, you right. rise from sit to stand, the little sticky notes everywhere. Every time I come up from standing, you pause for a moment. Breathe in, let your pelvic floor relax, exhale, small little Kegel, feel the tummy lift, lean forward, come up to standing. Okay. Release a line and lengthen the trunk, lengthen the, the, the thorax away from the pelvis, Right. and then connect, pelvic floor, TA, little bit low abdominal wall, and then move. So that's sort of the principles of sort of how we build an exercise program. Okay. I think once I start mentally connecting this better in my mind, it'll go probably a little, you know, a little easier. I'll know more what my body's doing because this is so foreign to me. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's about empowering through knowledge, knowing what to yes. do. So it's not about us doing anything for you. It's about how can you, how can you self-manage and, and help yourself? Cause that's so empowering and it's, it's your, your, your pathway to recovery, right? Your pathway to recovery. What do I have to do? I also feel like this is making me more responsible. Absolutely. It is. It's like, I'm not relying on you guys. I have to rely a lot on, I have to do it. Exactly. 